Hello there, this is Dan Featherstone here, and welcome to another round of Tech Tips. Today I will be discussing atmospheric pressure. Uh, so to click anywhere on the screen, you know the routine. Uh, let's click and go on to the next slide and get started. To begin the discussion on atmosphere, we will start here in space, where there is no atmosphere. This is as close to a perfect vacuum as is obtainable by humans. And if our friend here, the astronaut Major Tom, were to zero out the atmospheric pressure gauge, here it would read pretty much zero, meaning no measurable atmosphere is present. Once back on terra firma at Cape Kennedy, our astronaut friend returns us the gauge, and we travel to sea level. The gauge would then read 14.7 psi. Okay, so how does that help us? What does this mean to a pump? We'll begin with the weight of water. A cubic box of water that is 12 inches square. It holds 7.5 gallons and weighs 62.37 pounds. The base is 144 square inches, 12 by 12. Divide 62.37 by that 144 square inches and we get 0.433 PSI, pounds per square inch, but only by 12 inches tall. So how is this helpful? I'm glad you asked that question. 0.433 pounds is not what we usually use because in our industry, we work in whole PSI. So if we take 0.433 and divide it by one, we get that magical number of 2.31. Now I can see you're still not impressed, so let's go on. Again, what this means is 1 PSI is equal to 2.31 feet of head. So how can we use this in our industry? Well, if the bottom of a water tower is 23.1 feet in the air, I divide 23.1 feet by 2.31, and that tells me I have 10 PSI minimum of usable water pressure just from the atmospheric pressure alone. If I have a pond pump making 10 PSI at the nozzle, for example, then the water effect could effectively spray as high as 23.1 feet. Again, 10 PSI times 2.31. This also means if I have a 40-foot pipe, any diameter, and I have two feet of that pipe in the water to ensure I don't break vacuum, and I manage to pull a perfectly sealed vacuum at the top, the water would rise 33.96 feet. In a perfect world, 33.96 feet. But no one lives in a perfect world. We need to account for plumbing that may allow small amounts of air into the system. Pump assembly and machining has tolerances. Pumps will wear with age. So the industry standard is 25 feet, though some may use 27. This is determined by the manufacturer of the pump or an engineer, for example. Myself, I would err on the side of caution, and I use 25 feet. What does this mean in a practical sense? This is why in the pump industry, we have set the standard of a maximum lift of 25 foot for a centrifugal pump, minus of course the friction loss and the pipe and the net positive suction had required factored in. But all this would be for another tech tip talk. But what about elevation you ask? That's a great question. Yes, that does make a difference. You lose one PSI for every 2,000 feet you go up in elevation, up to around the 6,000 foot mark. If you're going beyond that, you can find a chart as it's shown here, or give the factory a call and we'll be glad to assist you. And yes, this means that for every one PSI lost due to this elevation, it also means you lose 2.31 feet of suction lift. An additional word of caution, if you are really cutting your calculations so close, even barometric pressure can change with storm fronts moving in and out. So always give yourself some room when designing a system. No one wants a waterfall that only works when the barometric pressure cooperates. Okay, to recap, at sea level we have 14.7 PSI. That means 33.96 feet of lift in a perfect world. Because the world is not perfect, we calculate 25 to 27 foot of lift depending upon what you're comfortable with using. We lose atmospheric pressure as we go up in elevation. As well, the 25 to 27 feet of lift will be less with the friction loss calculations and the net positive suction had required. 
But remember, this is for a different discussion. And finally, the magic number of 1 PSI is equal to 2.31 feet of head to convert from pressure to feet of head as needed. With that being said, thank you, and I hope you found this useful. Be kind to each other out there. Have a great day.